Every woman is blessed with infinite potential to achieve the impossible if she desires and believes in herself. Mona Yusuf Al Moyed is a Bahraini businesswoman, philanthropist, environmentalist, and women's rights campaigner who is the managing director of one of Bahrain's oldest conglomerates, YK Al Moyed and Sons. Mona has been instrumental in overseeing the business endeavors of the group, leading it meticulously towards desired destination. She's voted the third most influential Arab women's list in the MENA region by Forbes Middle East for 2013, fourth of the 10 Arabic women heading family business in the Middle East in 2019, and eighth of the 100 most influential Arab women in the Middle East in 2018. She's a member of the board of directors of BMMI and EBDA Bank, besides other companies. She's well known for her charity work, founder of Migrant Worker Protection Society, and frequently speaks about the role of women in building a better society today. Mona has been a firm believer of business with a conscience principle and is involved in many charitable institutions. Besides her business and social activity, she strives to draw a perfect balance between being a mother, housewife and mentor role that she plays. She's currently a Shura Council member, the upper house of Bahrain's parliament, which has its members appointed by His Majesty King Hamid. Welcome to Biz Talk, Success Stories of Business Leaders, hosted by BMC Global Live with Mona Al -Moyed. Well, that was Mona Al Moyed, a name which needs no introduction to Bahrain. This evening, it's indeed an honor and pleasure to have with us Madam Al Moyed on the inaugural episode of Biz Talk, brought to you by BMC Global Life. Well, good evening, ma'am, and welcome to the show. It's indeed a pleasure to have you with us this evening. Unfortunately, it's a time that we gather in a very sad note as the country mourns one of its precious sons, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa. So as we pay respect to this iconic figure, I would like to begin the episode of Biz Talk on a note of respect to him. How would you reflect on Prince Khalifa, please? It's true, it's a very, very sad time for Bahrain. Um, since the, the death of His Highness Prince Khalifa, Prince Salman Al Khalifa, the Prime Minister. Um, the whole of Bahrain is mourning, and we are uh, because he's like the father of all Bahrain. Um, he's been with us forever. We don't know Bahrain without Prince Khalifa. So we are very sad and very uh, uh, we we really pay him our respect and remember him uh, all his good. Things, uh, deeds which he did to Bahrain. Um, I mean, I can go back to whenever 70s or 60s, and I always remember uh, Prince Khalifa as uh, the father figure of all Bahrainis. Um, he, is, uh, he is the one who brought out Bahrain as a banking sector in uh -huh. the 70s. Yes. After the civil war in, in Lebanon. Uh -huh. in he was the, the person who attracted all the bankers to come to Bahrain. And Bahrain became the center of finance for all the banks. And of course, he, uh, he cared so much about uh, health, building hospitals. He cared about uh, education. 
He cared about the environment, he cared about the poor people, their problems. So he was a well-rounded person uh, who really cared about the people of Bahrain. And so for us, it's a very, very sad moment. Indeed, it's not only for you, ma'am, for the entire country, uh, including expats. It is a big loss because, as you rightly said, he is a father figure. So we've lost our father figure. Well, with salutes to that great leader, let's move on to this episode of Biz Talk, where we bring stories of business leaders. And who more can we expect to grace this evening other than you? Mona Almoyed, businesswoman, Shura Council member, philanthropist, activist, campaigner, environmentalist, animal lover, and a lot more. Ma'am, what if I ask you to describe your success story in a nutshell with all these hats that you wear, I just, which I just spoke about? Um, well, success is uh, all relative. I mean, to you, I'm successful. I don't know to other people if I am successful or not. Uh, I like to be modest and not think too, too much of myself. Okay. <laughs> I think that's one of the founding pillars of being successful, modesty. I mean, success is not my target. Okay. I just, uh, you know, I'm, I love to, um, to work hard and care about uh, what I do. And uh, I always have a target to be good at what I do. There are many hats that you wear, but then right now, people identify you as a businesswoman and a politician. What a balance. How do you strike this balance? Um, well, I'm more of a business owner. Okay. Uh, you know, I mean, we come from a business family. Yes. Uh, my great-grandfather was a pearl merchant. My grandfather also was in the pearl business. And my father started his electrical and automobiles. And I joined the business, you know, since I was uh, after university. So I've, all my life, it's for me business. I, I love business and I always used to watch my father doing his business deals and uh, how he loved people. He loved, uh, he always uh, uh, cared about the people he sells. He does not sell and he just forgets about them. So it's a well-rounded profession for him. And he cared about um, his customers, uh, he cared about his uh, employees. And that's what made his business successful. So for me, I worked when I was 21, when I finished from university. And I continued with my father. Then after his death, with my brothers and sisters, we are just, we take care of the whole business. Of course, now we don't do everything. If we have professional managers, mm -hmm. they run the whole business, and we we go we meet in the board, uh, you know, maybe four times a year, and we have executive committee where we all meet and we make decisions. Um, then, of course, I have this philanthropy. We, I started working with different societies since I was uh, 14 years old. Uh, in the summer holiday, we used to. Uh, go to help uh, the poor people in Bahrain villages. We used, like when there is a Palestinian problems, we used to collect money uh, with the Red Crescent Society. Mm -hmm. And also, we started our society in that time, and the Young Women Society. Yeah, so society, I was always yeah. with, uh, uh, you know, I liked uh, working for uh, for society philanthropy. And then, as I became older, uh, later on, we, uh, I cared so much about the orphans of Bahrain. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm now on the board of uh, child care. Okay. And, uh, of course, uh, my favorite and my uh, very soft heart is on the migrant workers. Migrant workers, yes. We started the migrant worker protection societies and also the... Um, different, you know, whatever there is a need for, uh, of course, it's NGO also, Bahrain Business Women Society is more profession. Mm -hmm. But uh, I am really active in all these non-profit organization. Right. Okay. That speaks a lot of Madam Al Moed. And that's why she is on this segment of Biz Talk, which not just speaks of business, but beyond business. 
Well, that's pretty interesting because you rightly use the word something close to your heart is migrant workers and MWP stands tall a testimony for that beginning, that humble beginning. Uh, business ethics and uh, social activity. How can one strike a balance? It's, uh, sometimes it is difficult to strike a balance. Isn't it? You have to do everything. Like, um, I used to be very active in the business as well. And we didn't have so many managers in those days. So I used to have meetings, go to show shows and fairs. And at the same time, I had small children, you know, and mm -hmm. four children. They are all grown up now. And uh, I used to, you know, take care of their studies. And uh, of course, my husband uh, helps me. And I'm lucky because my husband, Adil Fakhru, he's uh, a really... Uh, a good businessman and also a very kind father and a husband. So I, he really helped me a lot. He's my right hand, as I said. And of course, um, uh, in the end, you just have to put the priorities. What's your priority for the day? One day are my priorities my children. One day it will be business. One day it will be philanthropy. So every day is different. Okay, ma'am, we had had some serious talk, yes. business, ethics, and NGO. You touched upon some uh, topics like your husband, your sons, okay? This segment titled Biz Talk, we are speaking beyond businesses. We try to portray the success stories along with the people on the seat, the person on the seat, rather. So. Would you like to share with me about your family? Of course, I know you have wonderful grandchildren because whenever I speak to you, I hear them on the background. And you are a beautiful grandmother, I know that. Definitely, you had been a wonderful wife, a mother, a daughter. Can you tell us about your family? Well, of course, my family starts from my father and mother. Um, they were the base for our characters. Uh, my mother's still alive and, uh, uh, you know, God give her long life. Uh, she is the pillar for our, uh, for all of us. Um, we are uh, seven children. Okay. Uh, four, four, uh, four sisters and three brothers. One died in 1972, Muhammad. And uh, my mother is uh, still, she is like the banyan tree. And okay. we are all under her. Yeah. And she, she cares about us, about our children, about her grandchildren. Our, our children, children, she knows them by name and she knows what they are doing and she's always interested into our life. All right. And um, my father, of course, he died in 1996. He was also like, uh, he. I always looked up to, to my father. He was my... Uh, like every other daughter. Every other daughter has a role model in her father, isn't it? My role model. He really cared about his family. He loved us. He loved the girls also. Yes. And he educated us the best education. He took us to Europe to study and to, you know, and then he welcomed us to the business after we finished. So he was really, and then of course, I'm sad uh, when he was 72, he had kidney failure mm -hmm. and he died uh, when he was 78. And that was a very sad time for us. Yes, I can imagine. But we continued and with the brothers and sisters, we managed to grow the business. And this is my, and I have, uh, uh, as I said, uh, six uh, brothers and sisters. My eldest brother, Faru, uh, he is like our, uh, when my father died, he took charge of all the family. He brought us together. We, we never had any problems. You know, like in all families, you find after the father dies, the children go to court and they have fights. Okay. We didn't have this. We were, thanks God, we are always in good terms. Uh, my uh, three sisters, I, I'm very, very close to them. Um, each one, they have different uh, characters. Okay. My eldest sister, Leila, she is the, um, she is very wise and she listens to me. She, when I'm angry, she just uh, sucks my anger okay. and gives me the right advice. 
My sister Salwa, she is the closest to me because there is only one and a half year. Difference yeah. between the two, okay. And she is uh, very, very close to me. We always, we slept in the same room and we went to school together and we have the same friends, so I'm very close to her. And my sister Amal, she is, uh, she is always the, the, the flame of the group. Okay, the life of the party. The life of the party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to say that right. Because whenever we are together and she's with us, she always brings stuff. Is she the one who looks like you, who resembles you, or is it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she looks now. Yeah, I think you, you people mistake you for both, I think. No, I think they mistake me with Selva. Selva, yeah, okay, maybe. Um, well, she is uh, darker than me and she. Um, and then maybe it's Salva, yeah. Very beautiful also. <laughs> and, uh, but um, she is always, you know, she has uh, the ability, she took from my father, the ability to make jokes and uh, she is good at telling stories. Okay. And you know, giving uh, some spices. Okay. <laughs> and this is my uh, extended family. And of course, my close family is my husband. Um, we, we, we are cousins. Mm -hmm. he, he, his mother is from my family. But uh, we got engaged uh, in the 70s. I was 20 and he was 21. And uh, we got married in 1975. And we have four children. The eldest, Mohammed. Um, Mohammed is a businessman, I'm sure you know. I know him, yes. And Abdullah also, he works for his father. Mm -hmm. And Mohammed, both of well, the boys work for their fathers. And also Lubna, she works for her father. And my youngest daughter is uh, Samar. She uh, got her PhD from uh, UCL and she's working in London. Okay. So um, they are all married and uh, three of them have children. Uh, I have uh, four grandchildren. Four grandchildren, and they are they are a big bundle of joy, I'm sure. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay, that would make me want to ask you this question. Being a woman, it's it's a matter of pride. I'm sure you and me share the same. Being a woman, being a human being, how do you define these roles in life as a woman? You rightly said your father educated your, his daughters. Okay, in that time, like in the 70s when we were not even thinking of that. How do you think that added to your success story, having a, a man who thought different? Yeah, of course. I, I believe that uh, all of us, being who we are because of the way my father treated us and my mother. Uh, my father, uh, you know, he really believed in women. Mm -hmm. he, he's, you know, as I said, he's my role model. And uh, he respected my mother the way he treated my mother equally. He never, like in front of us, shouts at her or orders her. No, he really believes in... Respecting. Uh, respecting women. And that's why we are all, even my brothers, they are the same and us. Um, we all, you know, very close family. And we care about uh, our daughters and our sons equally. Mm. And, you know, I know some families, they send their daughters to... Uh, school and they don't take them to university, but they send the boys. To boys to the or they send the boys to private school and the girls to the government the school. Government school you know, some families, but uh, thanks God we are not like this. We really care about we cared about our daughters and our sons alike. Yeah, equally. and the same. My husband, uh, he's you know he really cares about his daughters, and on the contrary, I feel sometimes. He is closer to his daughter than his sons. Okay. Because all his father spoils his yeah, daughters. Yeah. He orders him and he doesn't don't do this, don't do that. But with the with daughters, there's always a soft corner for. So I'm more strict the, with the sons. Son, yeah, <laughs> right. I'm sorry, I'm more strict with the daughters. Daughters than the. Yeah. I'm soft with the I think that's how it happens in every family, right? Others uh, gender. Right. This question is for the women out there. What is your favorite accessory when it comes to being a woman, a true blue woman? Is it your sandals 
or your bag or your jewelry what is it just out of curiosity yes. I really care about my shoes and handbags. Okay. <laughs> I like to, you know, always look for things, but I'm not a big spender, you know. Okay. I mean, I have few things which I like, and I don't care about marks and brands and all these, you know, latest things. And I love jewelries, also. That's reflecting on your yeah, your drops. Jewelries, <laughs> but uh, they don't have to be expensive. Even custom jewelries like this, I feel it's just. Adds, adds yeah, yeah exactly precisely and, um, of course women has to take uh, care of themselves by eating the healthy food and of course we are so lucky now with youtube every morning i get uh, you know what is the best food for women relaxation for women so you know by listening to this it really brings you healthy life how important to do you ex exercise every day how important to relax every day, how important to eat the healthy tea food, you know. Which, I mean, in the past, we never knew about these things. NEC Rabbit. Send money online to India. Credit in seconds with great rates. Download NEC Rabbit app now. Welcome back and those of who joined us now, we are watching Biz Talk with Monal Moyed. Ma'am, let's get back to this very close to heart topic of yours once again and also a much uh, a topic of big interest for the expatriate community, the migrant workers. You've been very close to this community right from the age of 20s as you said or even before. How have you seen uh, the the contribution of migrant workers and the challenges. You've seen them very close. You might be able to tell us your observations. Yes, um, I mean, this is very close to my heart, a very uh, close cause to my heart. Um, of course, we all know that uh, migrants in Bahrain, they, uh, I mean, I'm talking about when we formed the society, the society started in 2005, mm -hmm. 2005, and uh, um, I, I became the chairperson for six years. And we were with a group of expatriates. And in those days, uh, it was really needed, the Migrant Workers Society, because there was no, um, uh, the migrant workers were not uh, treated uh, properly like today. Um, of course, you all remember when the the laborer used to be transported by trucks. Yeah. 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 And mm. then you had sometimes they have accidents and all the workers fall from the pickups and yeah. many accidents who were so horrible. Uh, I mean, this is one of the things which migrant workers, I feel proud to say that we brought this to the, uh, you know, the the government that, you know, these workers should be transported in buses and not in trucks. 
And of course, uh, the problem with nannies also. Yes. Who are working with domestic the, workers without the labor law. They were mistreated. They were worked uh, long, long hours. Yeah, they don't have time even to sleep. And we used to have in the society, uh, you know, some nannies who come and they are so exhausted because they haven't slept for a few days. And they were uh, some, uh, you know, I remember very clearly when nanny came and she was uh, beaten by her employer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She was burnt with iron. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you get all these crazy people who treat uh, their uh, workers so badly. So what we did is we, uh, we used to take them to court and we fight for their rights. Mm. And also the, un the unpaid salaries. I mean, I remember one case where uh, an, uh, uh, a nanny was not paid for 14 years. Can you believe it? Yes, I, I remember yes. there was also a case reported of late, yes. She, she is illiterate, she couldn't uh, call her. Family. Yeah, I remember that. And uh, her husband thought that she died. Oh. So, uh, of course, all these things you don't hear now. I mean. Now I'm not the chairperson, I'm the honorary chairperson. But there are uh, good uh, or, uh, members of the, you know, of the migrant workers and they are all dedicated to this cause. Yes. And of course we go sometimes, I help them with the, you know, going to see um, uh, officials in the government like Osama al-Absi, we went to visit him to ask for more rights for the workers. Um, so my role is not so involved now, but we still, uh, we always uh, ask for donations, especially with this latest pandemic. Uh, we collected uh, so much money from banks, from organization, and uh, the, the president now of the migrant workers is Nora Flaifer. Nora. Mm -hmm. And there is Hana uh, Buhujji, she is very active and uh, Raji, Raji, I think the third person, she is Indian. They are all very active and they have about uh, 60 members mm -hmm. and they take care of all the issues for the migrant workers. Um, I feel really happy that uh, we, are, we have come a long way from... Indeed, from indeed, started. yes. You know, I mean, now you don't hear of so many employees who were not paid salaries, like mm -hmm. GPZ before, you know, and for like uh, eight months they didn't pay their workers. Now I think the, uh, the Ministry of Labor is very strict with companies who don't pay salaries. Mm -hmm. They stop their business, they stop their activities. And uh, I'm happy to see Bahrain is coming towards more human rights. Yes, we have come a long way like Thank from you. the episodes that you just spoke about, about people being cruel to uh, migrant yes. workers. Gone are those days, I think, you know, we have very limited number of cases. And yes, thanks to yes. many women organizations which followed suit the MWPS. Thanks for having that heart. Thanks for initiating such a beautiful a creation called MWPS. I remember all those past presidents and members and we salute the MWPS for the role that they do towards the migrants in this community, which really makes us feel Bahrain as our second home, including myself. Yes, yes. Thank you very much, ma'am. You know, I mean, what, I'm so proud of Bahrain, even with the latest pandemic. Uh, the, all the expatriate treated so well and they did not differentiate between Bahraini and yes. expatriates. That's in right. terms of medication, in terms of, uh, you know, taking them to hospital, free uh, free medical, uh, which is uh, very good for Bahrain. The Bahrain government deserves a big salute for that. Pandemic was a testing time, which the litmus test for Bahrain government, and Thank it you. proved very good. Thank you very much, ma'am. You of are course. kind and you see Bahrain as, you know. Of course, that's why you won't find many uh, expats uh, who are not here for not less than at least a decade, you know, if not more, Fif uh, 40 That's years, 50 yeah, years. Yeah, and yeah. honestly, we don't want to go because this is home. This is home and the warmth is indeed there. Thank you very much. And that was about your passion. But, you know, however busy we are, we all have some hobbies, 
passion and i know you have a beautiful garden because your website has shown a beautiful garden i don't know how you find time for all this but what are your hobbies uh, well, yeah, as you said, gardening is mm. one of my. And pastimes. that garden is beautiful. The pictures uh, of that. Of course, I have a gardener. I don't do it myself, all, but uh, credit to him as well. Um, uh, I love gardening because you watch things grow and you live with nature, and so I spend most of my afternoons in the garden. And I like. I have like a fruit garden. Okay. I have like maybe ten different type of foods. Oh, okay. And uh, you know, vegetable also. This time of the year, we grow vegetables, and I love flowers. And um, uh, garden is really uh, my one of my best hobbies. I also love uh, swimming. Okay. I you know especially in the summer, and um, I also photography. Um, I think of my grandchildren, of my children. Okay, interesting. Them. And one final hobby which I like, but I don't have the time to... Cooking? Cooking. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I love to... Sometimes men do recipes. say that we use it as an excuse, that we love cooking, but we don't have yeah. time. But I'm sure you love but cooking. once a week, like at least, I try to make a different cake or a different... But okay. uh, not on a daily basis because... Uh, okay. I'm lucky to have somebody who helps me in the kitchen. Okay. And uh, but I like to look for new recipes, and uh, you know, um, we try it also with my cook. And sometimes it's good, sometimes it fails, so okay. we don't do it again. <laughs> All right. Just going back to your hobby of photography, what kind of pictures do you like to click? Oh, I love taking photos of babies and okay. children, small children, okay. and nature also. All right. Like, you know, plants, uh, flowers, I like. Do you have a collection? Have you ever gone, think, thought about an exhibition or? No, not on this professional side. No. no? But I just okay. do it for my own pleasure. Oh, pleasure. Okay, great. Oh, great. Okay. okay. So I, now I know the, the secret behind what keeps you going amidst all these yeah, because gardening and photography, closer to nature, yes. I think these things keep you relaxed. Yes. And that is a success tip to all those business women out there. We have Ms. Mona Al Moed on Biz Talk this evening. Bahrainly vitamin mara de ipar de samsara vishe men dana na le nacho food products. Ruji mano poche ka samrdo maaya bakshil pa nangla na nacho ningal kai nal gunda de. Palak karan badi matari jaya puni matari nangal nacho nar neeye nacho bedi chenna marayur sharkara marayur kudambuli nacho asam blended tea. Malli mulaga manyal turingi shuddha maaya nacho spices pulses masala gal. കൂടാതെ നാച്ചോ നാടൻ കശുവണ്ടി പരിപ്പ് പനങ്കാൽ കണ്ടം പ്രഭാത ഭക്ഷണം രുചികരമാക്കാൻ തിരുവോണം അപ്പപ്പൊടി അരിപ്പൊട്ടുപൊടി ഗോതമ്പ് പൊട്ടുപൊടി അച്ചാറുകൾ തുടങ്ങി വിവിധ ഇനം ഭക്ഷ്യോൽപ്പന്നങ്ങൾ നിങ്ങൾ കൈ നൽകുന്നു നാച്ചോ മാത്രമല്ല രുചിയറും ജ്യൂസുകളും പെൻഡാ ഡൽമൻ ട്രേഡിംഗ് ഡബ്ല്യു എൽ എൽ ബഹറൻ വിപണിയിൽ എത്തിച്ചിരിക്കുന്നു ബഹറിലെ എല്ലാ സൂപ്പർ മാർക്കറ്റുകളിലും കോൾ സ്റ്റോറുകളിലും ഹോം ഡെലിവറി ആയും നാച്ചോ ഫുഡ് പ്രൊഡക്ട്സ് നിങ്ങൾക്ക് ലഭ്യമാണ് നാച്ചോ ഇൻസ്പയറിംഗ് നാച്ചുറൽ വേസ് Download NSE Remit app now. Ma'am, have you visited India? Oh yes, uh, many times. Um, the first time I visited India is 1996. Okay. And we went to Bombay. Okay. And uh, I loved it so much. I loved the shopping there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, really, and I, um, I loved the food and uh, different Did you restaurants. get to try the street food? No. No. Okay. <laughs> Because my husband is uh, the type who is worried about street food okay okay and he's worried that we get a stomach bug and things right like okay so we went to a very good restaurant and very very delicious food mm -hmm. and uh, then after about six years we went to rajasthan 
Yes. Odaipur, Jaipur, State of and Colors. And all the palaces. Yes. For the Maharaja. And I loved it so much. And then I went with the, the King of Bahrain on a visit to India. Yeah, to Agra, I believe, to Delhi. Uh, to Delhi, yeah. Delhi, yeah. And, um, and I went once with uh, uh, Prince uh, Salman. Okay. Also to India, to Bombay. And uh, it was the most beautiful trip of my life. Um, I, I really love, you know, the life in India and the variety of things, you know, and it makes you... Uh, there is so much variety, you know, you see the people who are so rich and this, and then you see the people who are so uh, poor and this, so just so much the variety. We are here so much protected in Bahrain. Okay. We don't see all these things, you know. And also the nature of the Indian people, they are so willing to help and uh, loving, you know. Are so unlike uh, Europe, you know. Okay. I find you know Indian are so warm and kind and and uh, very faithful and honest and sincere. And uh, clear uh, of this nature is how they live in Bahrain. And like in our company, we have people who stayed with us 40 years, 50 yes. years yes. until they retired and they are still here. <laughs> still here yeah. So you know they really get so attached to you, not. For them, it's a job, and they want to go to another job. <laughs> right. So we are very uh, lucky. so Mumbai, Delhi, Rajasthan. Yes, you have had the slice of India, the good slice of India. But I'm sure the best awaits in Kerala. Have you been to Kerala? Kerala, no. My husband went, and he told me uh, that it was very nice. And most of our employees are from Kerala. Kerala. Yeah. So I'm really keen to go and see. Yes, you're more than welcome, and we are ready to host you there. Yes. Kerala is beautiful. Trust yeah. me. Beautiful like me. <laughs> you must visit Kerala, God's own country, man, because it's so full of green and it add it will definitely add to your yes. whole idea of India. Thank you for making us feel proud. Great. So as we slowly come to the close of this show, we cannot close without hearing from you that personal tip for those businessmen and women out there over the decades of experience, how, what is your personal success mantra? Um, Though you said you don't look at success alone, yes. but still. I feel my personal tip is not to, uh, like I said, not to aim for success and not to, if you are a businesswoman, you should not be just after making money. Uh, I think you should be doing your job because you love your job. And so your aim is not like a profit. Your aim should be that you love your job. And I think people who are successful are people who love their jobs. They love if they are like, uh, they have a restaurant, they love cooking, then they succeed in that. If uh, a person like uh, has uh, boutiques, if she loves fashion, so it's like it has to be coming from inside you. There should you be a passion towards passion what you do, what precisely. You do. Yeah. Not you just do it because you want to make money and then move hmm. in your life. So I really feel, and working hard and perseverance and not uh, getting disappointed if you don't succeed, you know. You just have to continue working hard and try to, uh, and, uh, to look for, I mean, from every failure there is a success. Yes. You learn a lesson, so that's yeah. Because you fail one day and you go to the next step. So, um, and I think you should have love for people around you, mm. whether they are your employees or your customers. You should just uh, you know, be nice to them, be sincere with what you do. I think this is my secret. <laughs> right, uh, that's true, but at the same time, I cannot close this question without mentioning the number of awards that have been gifted to you and honored to you. What do, the, what do these awards mean to you? Do you think the awards play a role in making a person successful? No, not really. I think awards is just it comes on the way, you know. Okay. I mean, when I first got the Forbes awards, mm -hmm. I didn't even know about it. You know, I didn't know that there is 
Okay. Which is a step forms. Okay. So one lady called me and she said, we want to see your CV. Uh, that is about 2010. I think. 10, okay. We want to see your CV, what you are doing. And she asked me a few questions. I answered her. And then I was really surprised. I was called to Dubai because I got the award for the Forbes list. I like awards which are not based on money. Mm -hmm. You know, you get lots of uh, institutions where they give you awards if you pay them. Pay the money. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I don't believe it. I feel awards should be uh, valued on the personal achievement of people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, in a way, it's uh, nice because after working hard and trying to be successful, if you get an award, it's like a reward to you for okay. what you've done. Yeah, sometimes it is It is an encouragement, yeah, isn't it's it? It's like with your yeah. children, you know, when they do something good, you reward you give them, them a you small take them to yes. buy toys. And <laughs> yeah, okay. So this award is the same. Great. That's Mona Almoyed with us on this episode of Biz Talk. And let's go into the final question, the talk of the town. Let's hear what Ms. Almoyed has to tell us about the most talked about topic, the U.S. elections. We know Biden has, yes. uh, well, it's, it's going on. Yes. We see soon yes. what's happening. Yes. What is your take on the results or the outcome of the U.S. elections? Yes. I mean, we are very close to USA and uh, for us, they are our allies. Yes. And, uh, for us, you know, we really want them to succeed and be prosperous, prosperous. Um, I mean, I was very, very happy with the results of Biden win winning the U.S. election uh, because um, I read about him a lot and uh, he has he comes from a background of politics. Mm -hmm. He went to the he fought in wars. He he was a U.S. senators for I don't know, 30, 40 years. So he comes from a political background. And that's why he is very diplomatic with people, you know, he mm. loves people. All what I heard about him is he cares about people. He, mm. um, while with uh, Trump, I felt I disagreed with him on many issues. Mm -hmm. The way he talked about Mexican, he, foreigners, I don't want foreigners to come to the USA. I don't, I felt like he created a bad feeling for the USA. Mm -hmm. So in a way, I'm happy that uh, hopefully... I'm happy that you shared your personal opinion, which might be echoed among many of us. But then what? how do you think the equation is going to change for the region, the Middle East or the GCC? Um, I think, Yanni, yeah, democratic, they are quite good for the regions. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they, uh, they... they. I don't see why we will not prosper with them as well. Mm -hmm. um, I know, you know, some people think all oh, 2011 because of, you know, Hillary Clinton and uh, Obama. Obama administration. Yeah. I don't believe that. I feel that uh, what happened that was very misfortunate, and uh, it has nothing to do with, uh, you know, the, the U.S. The leadership. theory of the U.S. and this. It, some, it was a bad feeling in the whole of the Middle East. It started with Tunisia, then with Egypt, then with, you know, different countries and. Uh, it was very sad, you know, and uh, all these countries would have been better without a, a revolution. <laughs> this. But uh, I think with Biden, I'm very optimistic that things under Bahrain will prosper more and uh, things will get better. On that optimistic note, we come to the close of this segment of Biz Talk. Thank you very much, ma'am. That was a beautiful evening and a beautiful interaction. As we conclude, what is your wrapping comment to the viewers? to Bahrain, to its people, to the expats. You know, I would like to thank everyone for, uh, you know, give me, giving me this opportunity to talk to you, to you and to the people of Bahrain and to the expats. And uh, I really want to uh, pass my best wishes to everyone. I hope we'll all prosper. And we are, like we said, we are going through the worst time in our life with this pandemic. Yes, yes. But we will come out of it, I hope. I'm always optimistic and we'll be better. We'll have a better life. Yes. And I hope that the economy will be better and people who lost their job will come back to their job, I hope. Um, it seems like, you know, there is a vaccine coming soon. 
So we're let's hopeful hope of that too. Hope. Yes. Okay. okay. That was Mona Almoy this evening with us on the very first segment of Biz Talk. And next week, until we see with another business icon, this is Raji Unikrishnan signing off. We have with us Francis Paidara, the Chairman and Managing Director of BMC Global Life and Sudhi Putindalikara, Business Director on stage to present a small memento to Ms. Almoy this evening.